to wrap the uh, top funds and investment insights in South Africa and beyond. Remember to join the conversation on Twitter at CNBC Africa, hashtag investment360. Now, as large institutional investors continue to increase their knowledge of alternative investments, there's a growing trend of niche managers within the industry. But are these niche ma managers worth the risk? Bronwyn Nielsen spoke to Andrew Rambolo, Chief Investment Officer of Sunlam Multi Manager International, about niche managers. I think a niche manager, the word niche in, in that sense is just being used to describe up and coming managers, managers that uh, may have started their businesses, you know, in the last, you know, three to ten years. Um, they still have a relatively small amount of assets under management um, and uh, they're looking to grow their businesses. So I think that's what niche is trying to describe. Now, what is the case for including them in your portfolio then, Andrew? Yeah, Bronwyn, for us, uh, you know, there's no real difference between a niche manager and one of the larger managers uh, when it comes to the fundamental question on what you're looking for. We're looking for managers that have skill. Uh, that's the bottom line at the end of the day. These are the managers that will ultimately deliver performance for our clients in excess of uh, a reasonable benchmark. Um, and uh, we're assessing these niche managers in exactly the same way that we're assessing the larger managers. I think the fundamental difference that we're just acutely aware of is that there are some other issues uh, which the smaller managers face, which perhaps the, the larger managers don't. And uh, we try and take those into account in, in, into our assessment of them. Let's uh, focus on those the for investment a moment. Professionals Andrew, let, let's focus on those challenges sure. that are specific to a niche manager. Well, obviously a large manager, you know, has got far more wider resources available at their disposal, uh, whereas a smaller manager often doesn't. Um, so operational issues, um, who is doing their back office operation? Is it outsourced? Or are they trying to do it internally? Compliance, marketing. Um, are they spending time going out there and marketing their business, trying to collect more assets? Or are they spending time actually managing the assets that uh, they've been appointed to managers? Um, and key man risk is, is, is one that often comes up. Um, and, and those are just some of the issues that one needs to take into account. So it's really got to do with scale then and the risk inherent with having smaller resources, smaller team and as you mentioned perhaps one uh, key person in, in the team and, and the significant risk of losing that person. Yeah, absolutely. But one must bear in mind that there are some large houses in South Africa where a particular investment capability does reside in a single individual. And even those large houses therefore have that same key man risk. Um, so key man risk is not only associated with the smaller managers. Do you think that the, the pressure that niche managers are experiencing at the moment will see those that perhaps can't keep their head above water falling out of the pot, so to speak? Yeah. Bronwyn, I, I think uh, as in any industry, we go through trends. Uh, I think we're going through a trend right now which uh, will see the emergence of a, a larger number of smaller managers. And invariably, some of them won't survive. And, you know, if we have this conversation in 10 years' time, there may well be a couple of managers around today that, that won't be around then. Um, the Is Ultimately, at the end of the day, if these smaller managers... Is there a trend, sorry to interrupt you there, sorry. Andrew, is there a trend, we, we spoke about the, the larger houses and potentially one big brand in that large house that is holding the investment philosophy, isn't there a trend where that key person may move out and create a, a niche manager for himself? Yes, absolutely. Um, Based on where I sit today, I, I'm certainly not aware of any of those significant risks. Um, but it has happened in, 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 in the past. And in fact, we are backing a manager at the moment. We have him in our client portfolios. Uh, and he previously was um, at, at one of the larger uh, houses. So that does happen from time to time. Is there a bias in these niche managers? Do you find the majority of them are value managers or do you have a, a, a fair proportion of those being momentum or growth players? 
Now, I, I think that's been one of the real interesting uh, aspects of the work that we've done, um, is that a lot of the smaller managers don't follow uh, the value or valuation philosophy that a number of the larger managers uh, do in South Africa. Um, so we have managed to identify uh, managers that have very distinct uh, view of the world, a uh, very distinct way of managing money, um, and in some instances a very, very exciting way. And, and we're actually quite excited about some of the managers that uh, we've identified in this space. One of the advantages of being small, and uh, perhaps this is used in marketing material across the board with the niche managers, is that they are nimble and can, can go where the big managers can't. Do you find that attractive? Uh, look, it, it is attractive. I, I think a question which we often ask ourselves and, and, and we explicitly test for is just because they have a bigger investable universe, do they actually use it? So where a manager has got a reasonable track record and he has been managing portfolios for a while, we spend quite a lot of time actually looking at the actual shares that they have purchased. And all of these, the shares that the larger managers are unable to perhaps get a large exposure to because you're talking about small cap counters. In some instances, you find that the smaller managers are exploiting that space, but sometimes you actually find that they're not. And, and, and so, that is really a, a marketing message uh, more than a, a, a fact. What is happening from a performance perspective out there? We know that obviously everybody is being monitored over one, two, three years, five years, ten years on a regular basis. What trends are we seeing? Are some of these niche managers managing to rise to the top from a performance perspective or are we seeing the, the bigger managers, uh, for want of a better word, outranking them from a performance perspective? Yeah, um, I, I think the results are mixed, Bonran. Um, there are a couple of smaller managers that have managed to put fantastic performance uh, on the board for their clients. Um, they tend at the present not to be the value-oriented managers, and that's understandable given that value hasn't been really rewarded as an investment style in South Africa um, over the last little while. Uh, but as we all know that uh, there are one or two of the larger managers in South Africa that are also putting on fantastic performance for their clients. So it's a mixed result right now. Now there's another interesting trend and correct me if I'm wrong, but within those large asset managers, you have boutique asset managers coming to fruition within the structure. That trend you're familiar with? Yes. Is it working? Um, Why are we seeing the large asset one. managers uh, doing that? Um, look, I, I, I think it's to address some of the concerns that, that, that people have had um, about the inflexibility um, that the perception of large teams have. I think it's to try and address um, the, the, that nimbleness concern uh, that, that you referred to earlier on. Um, yeah, it's, it's not obvious to us, though, that uh, this necessarily works. For us, investment skill lies in the individual or in the individuals that, that are managing the money. If they're in a large corporate that's structured on a house view basis or in a large corporate that's structured on a boutique basis, does that person suddenly become more skillful? Not in our view. So. Not, not, not a massive convert at this stage. Just a, a final question, the future of niche fund managers, where do you think we're going to see them five years out? More niche managers or fewer niche managers? Gee, uh, that's quite a tough one. I, I think a lot of that's got to do probably with how capital markets behave over the next little while. You know, if capital markets are fairly buoyant, then the niche managers' clients will be comfortable to leave their assets with the managers, and the managers will be able to sustain uh, a reasonable business. Um, if capital markets are a little bit more difficult, then the opposite may well pan out. Um, I do just want to mention, though, that I think that in five years' time, uh, we are going to be sitting and talking about a number of managers that today are called niche, 
uh, and to, in five years' time, they may well be household names. And then, I, I know I said that was my final question, but I've just got one more. In the current environment, when you've got a number of niche players out there, now you assess on a regular basis, how easy is it to assess? Because we always say that you can't rely on past performance. It's a little difficult, isn't it? Yes. It is difficult. Um, as I mentioned on, uh, on, on the show to one of your colleagues a couple of weeks ago, it, it's distinguishing between the real good ones and uh, what we refer to as the competent managers. That is really, really difficult. We think it's easy to identify the managers that are poor. And so one can put those aside. Uh, but you sit and you have conversations with very clever, very hardworking individuals and making up your mind between is this just a competent person or is this a really skillful person? That's where the challenge lies for us. 